You ready for more static hub world crap? I sure, I'm sure not. I, I don't really, there's not really much to say about this, like you just go to all these um, areas again at night until you can get to the hub area again. I'm, the only way I'm like going, like talking to everyone is because sometimes you get like a, like a seed, like a music CD or something. Um, and that's basically it. You don't actually get anything else in these, in the Wii versions hubs. Or the villages, rather. I don't know if you ever have to talk to people twice. Now we can go to the cafe terrace. Yep, now we can go to the stage. Anything else? kind of just wasting time here. Um, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh. There we go. Okay, I don't know, like, yeah, I, I, it's, hmm. I'm not really sure, like, what I, what I did differently there? Like, maybe I had to get the moon tablet, then talk to him? Um, I, I, I don't understand how the CDs work. Like, if anyone can tell, like, if anyone knows, um, any, like, method, or, not method, but, like, if anyone knows how to tell, um, that would be nice to know. Because I, from the day I pl started playing this version, to today, I never understood the whole, like, getting CDs in villages. Like, it just seems really random. Huh? Hey! You're back to Nice Guy Sonic again. This light's so warm. It kind of feels like the afternoon sun. Do you think your transforming's got something to do with the sun, Sonic? I don't know. Well, clearly. <laughs> uh, but yeah. That door's glowing, Sonic. Maybe that means it'll open now. Let's go see. <laughs> I'm not bobbing into doors. <laughs> You're looking all scary again. Don't you get tired of switching all the time? That's actually kind of funny in my context because I'm um, recording this playthrough. I have to keep on getting up to switch the consoles over and over, um, and like, this is, like, this is, like, one of the most unorthodox playthroughs I've ever done, <laughs> and, that, if you press the uh, that kind of, um, I know it wasn't intended to be directed at me, but, Move the I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's just generally funny how that works, um, but yeah, like, regardless of that, though, um, like the, um, the day stages, you get, or the day, like Avatar Stay rather, you get this, um, opening tutorial that teaches you a bunch of g general moveset stuff, and, <laughs> again, I don't think they needed to do this, I, I really don't think they needed to, like, make it as slow of an introduction as this. Like, they really could have just... Like, this is all part of, like, the actual stages. Um, and they really, they really could have just, again, had the, um, 
whatchamacallit, the hint bubbles instead. And I, I really don't understand why they have to babe you, baby you this hard. Like, again, you can, uh, like, you uh, is she gonna argue, um, that this is for, um, this might, this is an easier version and it's probably gonna be for a more casual audience. That's fine. I don't, I don't mind that in principle. But, again, <laughs> there's a reason why hint bubbles exist in these games. So I don't, I, I don't get it. I really don't. The that's a lot yeah. of yeah that's a lot that's a lot of bad guys seen here no one <laughs> but yeah um god i so how this version works with the gamecube controller is that your um left punch is used by the pressing the left bumper and and then r is the right is your right hand um and it works fairly well, it does kind of hurt after a while though, so you might not want to hit it, hit the button too hard. Um, I do, I believe, I don't remember what the controls are for the classic controller, but for the Wii Remote, uh, you have to alternate between swinging the Wii Remote and, Wii Remote and Nunchuck, and a good reason why I'm playing this on a standard Wii and not the Wii U, um, with so I can not only because I can have the GameCube controller support, but because I always get confused what button does what on the classic controller, and the um, with the Wii and Nunchuck, you have to keep you have to keep swinging the stupid things like constantly throughout the game for like home attacks, boosts, attacking with the Werehog, and Climbing and general, just whatever you can think of, you have to swing the Wii Remote and Nunchuck around, um, and I, as as much as it can like cause pain to your fingers after a while, I just much prefer using the GameCube, GameCube controller for this because I'm at this point I'm kind of done with motion controls. Um, yeah, just keep doing this a few times. Yeah. Um, I'm honest. I'm like for the most part, I'm not like abolishing motion controls, period. But if I had to choose between not having motion controls and having them, um, I would choose not having them in this day and age, personally. Like some games are gonna feel really weird without it. Like Galaxy One and Two, I can't imagine not having uh, the spin the spin attack used to, used to shake the Wii Remote, or the pointer. Like, I can't imagine playing that game any other way. Um, but stuff like the Metroid Prime Trilogy, I know people um, like to say that the Wii versions of those games are the superior one because you have more accuracy with the motion controls, which I can understand, and I'm inclined to agree to a point, but um, even then, I'm so used to you, uh, playing twin stick shooters at this point, uh, and like even on the Switch itself, like Splatoon and whatnot, um, is a, it, you, I use twin stick and I don't bother with the motion controls. Uh, and I know a lot of people do, and I can see why. Um, and I, again, I can see why people prefer prefer that in Metroid Prime, but I. I'm, again, I'm just kind of done with motion, motion controls at this point, and I want, and I just feel more comfortable using a normal controller. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not gonna say like if a game has motion controls, I'm automatically gonna say, nope, nope, not gonna play it. Like I'm not gonna say that, but again, if I had the choice, then you know. Um. That being said, though, I do appreciate the fact that this game, as lo as well as many other Wii, Wii games, allow you to give the allow you to have the choice between using the Wii Remote and a GameCube controller. 
uh, like zero gravity does this as well, like as well as like stuff like what you know, grow and whatnot. And that is that is nice. That is nice. I do appreciate that much uh, because it's best to have the option instead of not ha having it at all. <laughs> Star Fox Zero. Um, so you know, I do appreciate that at the very least. And because because I know uh, that. I do feel, I do think motion controls do have a place in the gaming industry, if not um, more uh, more of a subdued place compared to how it was back a few years ago, like maybe a, maybe like half a decade ago, um, but you know still, maybe not even that, like maybe even like over a decade ago at this point, I don't really know. Um, we're regardless of such. I should probably be talking a bit about the Werehog. So, um, as you may or not may, may not know, um, the Werehog is the most is the more controversial half of the game, where it's uh, less focused on going super fast throughout a long uh, stage with the boost and whatnot. Um, th this get style of gameplay is more God of War esque where you go through a bunch of stages and it's more slow paced and it's like a beam up more beam up kind of style of gameplay um, and there's a good chunk of people that aren't the biggest fan of it which I can totally understand um, it's completely removed from anything you've really seen in the series up to this point even when keeping into account like the adventure games um, like the like you never really saw like a beat em up kind of style for Sonic before, and yeah, I can understand the um, di the disinterest or the um, dislike towards it. Hey, wow. If I if I'm gonna be like, I don't know if this is the minority speaking. Like, I I don't know what like nowadays. I don't even know what people think about the series. <laughs> well, well, not the series, but I don't even know what people find. Think about individual games anymore, but if I had to bring in my two two cents about this, I personally really love the Werehog. Like it's not my favorite thing in the world, but I think it's a great change of pace from the daytime stages. And while the the gameplay itself is no like it is, I'm not gonna say it's like Bayonetta or God of War, which is what it's mainly referencing. Um, well, I'm not gonna say it's like to that level. But for what it's worth, I think they did a fairly decent job with it, all things considered. And I, f I find the combat overall like fairly satisfying. Like it's pretty limited in this version, but the fact that the enemies don't have that much health to begin with makes it so it doesn't. It never feels like it's too much of a problem for me. And I'm. Also, just a, a gen, generally, generally, I'm just a sucker for exploration in games, um, and there's a crap ton of it in these stages, so I'm honestly fine with it, pers personally speaking. And again, so Sonic is no stranger to multiple gameplay styles, and start no when you have when you have gameplay styles like the um, the um, mech stages in SA2. Which are inherently more slow paced, slow paced platforming. Uh, I that makes me not mind this. Like that, that's one of the reasons why I don't mind this so much because we we've already had like slower paced gameplay styles before in this series, and and um, I don't remember what I said then. Um, like it's been a while since I did SA2, but I don't. Regardless of that though, I I do enjoy the mech stages like fairly quite a bit and I enjoy these too so yeah I don't know I I'm not as much of a stickler for this stuff as as compared to a lot of other people where um, it's it seems to be a general like thing where Sonic needs to be going at a, a generally fast pace um, otherwise it's not gonna be remembered fondly, which I get, um, but personally, 
Personally speaking, I don't mind the more slower paced gameplay styles. To a point, I don't, I don't like um, big like Bigs fishing in SA1, obviously. But um, for the most part, I don't mind the slower paced gameplay styles. And um, the way this game in SA2 does it, where you go through, like you don't just like S. Okay, so SA1 handles it where you um. Just pick a pick, pick a character, and you're gonna stick with that playstyle through until you get to credits or until you switch characters. Uh, whereas SA2 in this game, um, you're gonna be switching between the playstyles on a semi regular basis. Um, and I personally like I can see why people would prefer the SA1 method. Um, and I I that makes sense. Like you. It makes you know what you you know what you're getting into, and you're gonna stick with that until credits roll, or again if you decide to switch. Um, but personally, I prefer how this game in SA2 do does it, where um, you switch between the playstyles, and it makes it. And for me, that makes it that makes both playstyles feel fresh, because you're not sticking with one or the other for too long, um, and. It keeps things engaging, in my opinion. Um, now, admittedly, admittedly, because the day, the nighttime stages are more uh, slow paced, and they're naturally going to take much longer to complete. And that comes. The, wait, can I go back here? Actually, no. Okay, <laughs> good. I don't. I, yeah, I don't remember where some some of the secrets are in this, so there might be a bit of goofing around every now and then. <laughs> So if I can do this, there's a weird trick you can do in this version. Ah. Yeah, like it's it's really weird. Like you can do a, like a double jump, and then you can do like a, the you can grab onto an a ledge like that, and then you can do another jump. I don't know why. Like it's really bizarre, but it can be used for speedrun tactics. Um. Not that I'm good at any of that, <laughs> mind you, but hey, what, what are you gonna do? But yeah. I really, I really do like the whole, like, nighttime aesthetic in these stages, though. Hey. And the music again is just. I just love it. <laughs> I'm not the best at, um, explaining music, but. It's generally just really good stuff here. And yeah, these small, th these weird genie guys or whatever. Um, your best bet is just to throw them at, at each other. Like they, um, enemies in general, like take a massive amount of damage by f being thrown in this version. So yeah, my best advice is to do that as much as you can if you want to get through fights. Uh, as quickly as possible. Alright, so... Yeah, as you notice that we went into two acts here. Um, that's another difference between the versions. Whereas, like, the Wii version splits, splits it up into three distinct acts. Um, the HD version, on the other hand, always just has one I see a always just has one stage for both day and night or like the main stages obviously like I'm not counting like bonus content here um it has just the the one stage um and it's kind of interesting I assume the reason they did that is because um it would be less taxing on the console for the Wii version um but uh, it, but uh, um, uh, but because of that, it's also a double-edged sword. Um, on one hand, it makes it so you don't have to play like a long state, like a long stage in one go. Like it's split up into three different chunks. Um, but putting together the three night stages for each continent is a lot longer. Well, not a lot, but it's generally longer than the HD version stages. And 
it can wear on you after a while, admittedly. Um, I feel like the HD version does a better job at balancing that out. But again, I, I actually really enjoy the Whitehawk stages, so I don't mind it. I don't mind it too much, but um, given how this player style is a lot more slow paced, you're going to be spending a lot more time here than in day stages, and I think the main the main problem uh, is the fact that you only have one major day stage, and then you just do a bunch of like random missions, but you're all, but you are still in the same stage. Whereas in, um, uh, whereas like the w when you go to night, you're going through three distinct like levels, um, and yes, yeah, bit of a bit of a weird imbalance going on there. Oh crap! Can get this. Was I seriously, like, off by, like, a, a second or two? Like, what the hell? Oh, well. I might go- I might go back to get an S-rank layer. I- I would- I would like- I would- I- I would like to, um... Show off, like, as much of the Gaia Gate areas as possible. But we'll see. I do like that each- Act has like a unique sub subtitle. That is, that is pretty nice. And um, this this is one of the more open stages for uh, the Wii version. This the, 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 I can talk. Uh, <laughs> this is a really nice stage. Like it's not really that long. Like if you just go if you just go right to the end, it's it really doesn't take that long to complete. But. Um, there's a lot to explore if you care to look around, and it's a set. This is like a set piece that's not in the HD version, where you have like all these weird statues around, and um, you have the greenery, like you have like the fields and all that. Like you don't have that in the HD version for whatever reason, and like this is really nice looking. Like I, there are some. Set pieces in the Wii version that are legitimately like really cool, and this is the style of that like the there's gonna be um like a decent amount of stages for this version that are fairly like fa stand out from the HD counterpart in a pretty substantial way, and we'll see a, we'll end up seeing a lot more of that as we play for the game here. Um. And it makes it makes it I, it makes it so there isn't really a definitive version of this game. Like I, I like the HD version a hell of a lot more personally, but I don't think the Wii version is, is anything to scoff like scoff about. Like there, there's a lot of love put into this game, and I feel like if you are at least morbidly curious. Um, I would recommend giving the Wii version at least, at least one playthrough, because I, I do think it's worth playing both versions at least once. Um, unless you just really don't like Unleashed, that, and then if, if that's the case, then I don't know what to tell you, but, um, yeah. We have these stupid bee enemies, the bane of my existence. Yeah, if they, yeah, just may as well bring this up now because I, and I know it's gonna have to be brought up eventually, but um, the the what's it? The combat music or whatever, the the werehog battle theme. Um, that's like really infamous because I it ruins the really great music that you get into the in these stages, and. Forces you to listen to this every five seconds, um, and they really should have done it like Kingdom Hearts, where every continent had like a specific battle theme or something like that, or at the very least, just been a remix of the battle theme with like different instruments to uh, 
different instruments to fit with the in to fit with the continent you're in, or s something. Um, whereas all they did is have like five variations of variations where they play at different parts of the song or something, which is really lazy, honestly. Um, so that's kind of lame. On its own though, I don't think this song is bad. Like, it's a fine song, and I like I like jazz. I like jazz. <laughs> um, it's like the song itself is fine, but they really didn't they really didn't need to do it like this. Like, it doesn't need to play this often. There. Uh, what are you gonna do? Probably not much. Yeah, this game. Um, has these weird gate things where you have to look around the stage for these, like, swi whatever you call it, like, these circle Gaia powered gate orb thing of a whatever. <laughs> you look for you look around for them in a in a few stages or, or several stages rather. That it does it happens quite frequently actually, um, and I do think it's a nice incentive to look around, explore a little bit. Um, they are never really that hard to find, but I do like the incentive to look around. Um, but yeah. Doesn't really get in the way of anything, so... Can't really complain too much. Yeah, this guy is slightly bigger than the other- well, quite a bit bigger actually, but... How do I- There we go. Okay, so, yeah, we go, go in Unleashed mode, um, and that basically makes you super-powered and gives you some extra moves. Um, at this point in the game, we only have, like, a few moves, so we can't really do much about that, but... Yeah. It does change up your combo, so a little bit, um, a little bit. Not so much now, though, but... In the future, in the future, oh my, okay. <laughs> in, in the future, they will change. That being said, though, this version doesn't really have that many, that many combos to speak of, so you won't see that much variety, um, unfortunately. Yeah, boy. Okay, this is a good move. It's a nice way to extend your combos. And oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't have control for a second. But yeah, now we're back with um, HD. <laughs> don 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 don. Say anything else? I guess not. Get a hold of yourself, man. How, how dare you be aware of the the uh, state of the world? Yeah, some sometimes there's NPCs that are just un uh, you can't talk to. They're just kind of in the background. Well, not in the background. They're, they're obviously in front of you. They're not in the background, but um, but they're basically just there to be there. Um, obviously, like you see the arrows above their heads, then you can't talk to them. Um, so yeah. Something to keep in mind. I mean, it's pretty obvious w who you can talk to. Is there anything else you say? Nope. And you do have a uh, camera control in this, so it's appreciated. Hey there. Kill you. <laughs> I wanna. I'm going to be using primarily the right trigger because um, the left, like L2 on this PS3 controller just doesn't work for some reason, so I'm just not going to use it. Thankfully you never have to use um, uh, L2, you can you can primarily stick with um, L, like R2. Hey there. Lol. Tss. 
Ask Sonic Team. Is any, anyone else around her? I did get both medals, okay. Again, I want to be as far, far as possible here. Whatever, let's go. It's kind of interesting how the loading screens are just a bunch of code. I wonder if that's like actual code for the game or just gibberish. I'd assume gibberish because I'm, like, showing code of the actual game, even if it's in small uh, increments. Like, I'm not sure that's a really good idea, so I don't know. Then again, Sega aren't really known for being too smart in a lot of instances. Oh, good camera. <laughs> what is this camera? Okay. I, I, I... I like to think that they're smarter than that, though. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, like, uh, recent- well, not- fairly recently, anyway. Um, Nintendo- some of- some Nintendo stuff has been, like, show- like, leaked. Like, the coding for some- for some old games or consoles or whatever. Which is... kind of terrifying? Um... So that, that, that's a thing that exists. 